Kaptur. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, very much for holding this extremely important hearing. And I wish to place on the record with unanimous consent an article, if it has not been placed on the record by other members, that was in the New York Times on May 4th entitled The Rise of the Superweeds. Without objection. Thank you. And I'll just read one statement from Andrew Wargo, the third the president of the Arkansas Association of Conservation Districts, who states uh, that the um, impact of these genetically resistant weeds is the single largest threat to production agriculture that we've ever seen. Now that's interesting for someone from the state of Arkansas, but the article goes on and it mentions many of the concerns we've been talking about here today. Let me just state for the record that I have legislation that I would also like to um, place on the record here, H.R. 3299, I've reintroduced in this Congress, called the Seed Saver Legislation, uh, to allow farmers to save their seeds and to uh, actually pay royalties to the Department of Agriculture at levels that they assess, not to the seed companies. And um, incredible concentration in the seed market has priced many of our farmers out of the market and given seed companies, not the seed dealers, unnatural control over who holds the um, power of life. While this is not the primary purpose of this hearing, Mr. Chairman, I would like some of the panelists to um, uh, comment uh, here on the incredible concentration of the seed market and the market manipulating actions of these companies. And I wanted to ask Mr. Rausch if, in fact, um, he has to pay technology fees uh, when you purchase your seeds. And also, uh, do you have the ability to harvest the seeds that you purchase? I think you mean, do I have the ability to retain or keep the seeds? Yes. That, no, I do not. Um, I don't think most members of Congress really understand this. I don't think they understand the issue at all. The Supreme Court has usurped the law of the land, which is the Plant Variety Protection Act, and I'll leave it at that. Um, I wanted to uh, mention in terms of uh, Mr. Kimball's testimony that APHIS funding levels in the recent 2011 budget um, provide an additional $6 million to assess the risks of genetically modified organisms for the biotechnology regulatory services. Um, the uh, budget provides about $19 million for the overall uh, services there within APHIS. Uh, to, to assess the risks of forthcoming genetically modified organisms. This is an increase uh, compared to the prior year, and I'm wondering if you are stating that that is not sufficient. I just want to understand what you're saying about the budgetary levels of USDA. Yes, if, if I may, um, I, I cannot resist um, commenting on, on the first thing you brought up. It is true right now that Monsanto owns 25 percent of the world's commercial seeds. Uh, together with uh, Syngenta, Bayer Dow, and DuPont, they own almost 50 percent of all the world's uh, commercial seeds. Uh, we've seen a massive and a significant rise in the cost of corn. And it's a gentleman who yield. I don't think the American people really understand that the seeds of life are now controlled by chemical companies. Yes, and, and, I, and I think part. that the, the, the manner in which that they, they control them is through acquisition of seed companies, through patenting of those seeds, through genetic engineering of those seeds and through potentially the, something called terminator technology, which would be a technology which has the seeds basically infertile after one growing season. So, you know, we are facing, a cri I think, a hidden crisis in, in seed diversity uh, that uh, if we are letting just a few chemical companies decide which seeds on the earth are going to be available to farmers, which are not, uh, I think we're, you know, if this were water or oil, I think we'd, be in a, we'd realize the crisis we're in. So I just want to... You know, undergird what you're saying. I think it's terribly important. And I, if you I've have not recommendations, or Mr. Roush, on what we might do about that through your organizations, I hope you'll get back to us on that. Yes. Well, thank you. And and, and as far as far as you know, it, to me the problem, and I and I, I really should, you know, I, I can get back to the you know subcommittee on this. To me, the problem with appropriations is not as important as the problem of exactly who the agency seems to be serving, and uh, having witnesses these five litigations all lost by APHIS, having looked at the IG and the GAO report and the Farm Bill, it seems to me that, that the USDA, now with this administration as well, but certainly the last administration, is bending over backwards to find excuses not to do an environmental impact statement, excuses not to look at the economic harm, not to look at, the, and, and to this day refusing even to look at the issue which is the central issue of this hearing. Uh, and so regardless of if, they're spending, if they have the money and they're not spending it actually doing the work they have to do, uh, you know, it seems to me that is the problem. Whether that is actually adequate to do that job, somebody else would have to, 
to, to, to say, but again, I want to reemphasize what we say here. I certainly do not like to see the agency relying solely on the information being given by the companies. And I would certainly think that one way to, to, to spend that money would be to get independent university researchers like some of the people on this panel to really look at the emergence of these superweeds and give us the kind of information that we need and then okay, put that in the environmental impact statements. I know my time has expired, Mr. Chairman. But I